Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on configuring SPSS to automatically format tables in APA style. Now, it should be noted that the default output of SPSS is not in APA style, but you can make changes so that the default output can be set to something that's close to APA style. There will always need to be modifications when you are copying output tables into Word for final editing. Uh, but you can arrange it in SPSS to where the vast majority of the changes required for APA style can be made automatically. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do here. So first, taking a look at these fictitious data have loaded in the data view here in SPSS. These data are configured for a MANOVA, and I selected that simply because it has a large number of tables in the output. So you have an ID variable, a program uh, independent variable at three levels, and two dependent variables. So I already have this configured. It's general, linear model, multivariate, and this is already set up for MANOVA. So I click OK, and you can see I have the default output here in terms of formatting in SPSS. So if you look at these tables, and I'm going to select one of the larger tables here, let's say uh, test of between subjects effects, you can see that there are vertical lines here, which you would not have in APA style. You can see the title. Uh, test of between subjects effects is bold and centered where it should be left justified and not bold and the thickness of the lines uh, the interior horizontal lines is different than the outer lines here and of course in APA style you're only going to have horizontal uh, but the thickness would be the same and here by default it's different and of course the font is not in 12 point times New Roman. So what you're going to need to do to create output that comes out mostly in APA style is to create what's called a look. And you'll do that by selecting a table and then making the changes to that table and then saving that look and then setting that look as your default output. So first I'm going to double click here and then right click and you can see I have several choices here. I'm going to select Table Looks. And as you can see, the Table Look files are displayed here on the left. And there are several choices. Uh, academic, and you have others here that stand out a little bit more. Some using gray. There's a lot of default uh, defaults built in to SPSS. And you first want to start with the one that most closely approximates APA style. Now, in this one, clearly I have APA style already in here, uh, but I'm going to show you how to build this uh, from the beginning. So the closest one, if you don't already have uh, APA style installed, would be academic. All right, so I'm going to select academic because that's the closest default style, or at least fairly close. In my opinion, it's fairly close to APA style. So we're going to edit this one. So starting with academic, we're going to go to edit look, and this is going to open a table properties dialog, which is separate than the table looks dialog. And here is where we're going to make the changes that we're then going to save. So I'm going to go into cell formats first, because there's quite a few changes that have to be made here. So if you look here to the right, you can see you have area, and then you have all the areas you can change. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to select them all and make all the changes at one time. You have to go through each one and make the changes. So we know, for example, if we go to title, you can see the text that needs to be changed to Times New Roman. So you have to find that each time. And then 12. And in this case, it would not be bold. And in terms of title, the alignment would be left justified. So those are the changes you'd want to make for the title. Then moving down to the next selection, it would be layers. 
And again, this isn't going to match up perfectly with APA style, uh, but usually for layers, I prefer to have this in Times New Roman and 12, of course, uh, but also italicized. Because what I'll usually do is edit uh, layers to represent the description of the table. And APA style, that's italicized. Then moving down to corner labels. Again, you have to change all these individually. Times to Roman, 12. Row labels. Now, fortunately, you only have to go through and make all these changes one time because we can save this. Uh, but the first time, you do have to go through all of them. Or, or a good number of them and make this this change. So I go all the way down through data with the Times New Roman 12 point font change. Now for caption and footnotes this font can be smaller in APA style so I just leave this at default because I'm going to change this uh, to what I need so the table presents logically in a format that's easy to read according to the publication manual. So I'm not going to make changes to this, uh, but most likely moving this table from SPSS to Word, I am going to make some changes to the caption and footnotes. But this is pretty good for a default format. Moving back to borders, now instead of a drop down here like you saw in the cell formats, in borders, you have this list box, and it has all the borders uh, listed. If you click on the border, you can see here I clicked on the top inner frame. It's going to select that, and then it's going to show what style is currently set for top inner frame. Now, there's a few choices here. I think the closest is the one right below none uh, for this particular, you know, for the top inner frame, this particular line, uh, this one here. And then if we move down, and you can see, we can click on data area left, data area top. I'm going to change that to that top one, bottom inner frame. I'm going to change that to the top. All right, so this one's already set there. So you kind of click through and make sure they're all just set to this line at the top here. Now for anything vertical, of course, you'd want the style to show as none. And you can see that since I selected the academic styles default, uh, the vertical options are already set to none. So you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, all four of them are, are set to none because you don't want any line appearing there. So I click OK here. And you can see that this is fairly close to APA style. Then we'll move down here to Save As, so we can save the style that we just created. Click Save As, and you're going to want to make sure it's in the Looks directory. And you may have to search for that a bit. Uh, but that what I entered here for mine was APA underscore style dot STT. So I'll click Save here. And of course, in my case, it's going to let me know that I already have APA style saved. I'm just going to say replace existing file. Then click OK. And you can see that as I was making the changes, even though I was making them for the overall options, so I could change the default output style, it also made all the changes in this table. So I can get a preview here in the actual output viewer of what my new APA style format will look like. So next we want to set our new style as the default. So if we go to Edit, Options, you can see there's a wide variety of options here. Uh, pivot Tables is the option we'll want in order to set a new table look. And as you can see here, you have System Default, Academic, and then the new APA style so I'll select APA style, and depending on how you want to deal with large tables, 
uh, wide tables here, you can see uh, you can change the uh, default here from do not adjust width to shrink width to fit. So I'm going to go ahead and make that change and then click apply. So you can see the code that was executed here in the output viewer that now changed the look to APA style. I'll click OK here. And now I'm going to rerun the same analysis. Just go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Multivariate, and run the MANOVA again. And as you can see, all the output is in a style that's close to APA style. Certainly a lot less work would need to be done here to make this consistent with the specifications listed in the publication manual than the default format that SPSS has. So as you move through the uh, different output tables, you'll notice we have no vertical lines. All the horizontal lines are of the same thickness. You can see here under 95% confidence interval that the column spanner, uh, the line right beneath the 95% confidence interval is correct. Right? So it's only underneath that phrase and doesn't extend all the way to the left. The title is left, is left justified here, like pairwise comparisons is to the left. and all the data being displayed is in Times New Roman 12, except for the caption and the footnotes, as I mentioned before. So as you copy and paste these into Word and prepare this for a manuscript, uh, remember you are still gonna have to make some changes to make this fit with APA style. But generally, using this new format, there should be a lot less work to do to make these tables compliant with APA style. I hope you found this video on figuring SPSS output to generate as APA style to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.